Hello. Thank you for listening. I'm getting ready to read Bob's near-death experience. Open quote. Bet you wonder why I own a church. As a child, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. They lived in a schoolhouse built in 1896 along the Mississippi River. In 1984, the church was for sale, so I bought it. My grandfather was as proud as he could be and said, I own the school, you own the church, we can run City Hall. While working on the church roof, my grandmother brought me lunch. I came down off the roof to take a break. I was paying for my brother-in-law to help pick up the garbage as I tore it off the roof. I was in a hurry to get back up and finish installing the felt paper, so I left my brother-in-law and grandmother on the front steps eating their lunch and went back up on the roof. After working a few days with the rope around my belt, I thought I wouldn't fall, so I didn't use it this time. Thank God I didn't, because a sudden stop halfway down would have surely snapped my back in half. I remember pulling the nails out of the boards that I was standing on, not knowing that the board was going to tilt. I remember falling over the edge, saying to myself, maybe it isn't that far. I went flying off the roof. The following experience is so hard to explain because there's nothing I can compare it to. When I hit the ground, it seemed like the momentum of a freight train going 100 miles per hour knocked me out of my body. I remember standing up and looking around and seeing everything was in the color green. Light green, dark green, all shades of green. The church was green. Mississippi River was green. I thought I broke my head. I put my hands on my head to hold it and laid down on my back. As my body hit the ground again, pictures of my life went through my mind. It was like a freight train of knowledge moving at the speed of light. Each car carried experiences of my life, both good and bad. From the time that I entered my mother's room until the present, I was the only I was only one I was the only one to judge my actions. I remember feeling so bad that I hit a frog with a stick as a young child. The last frame was a shot of seeing my wife with my two children, two and four years old. After the life review, I heard my grandmother saying prayers over me, so I also said my prayers. Dear Lord Jesus, if you let me raise my kids, I will work for you the rest of my life. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. I came back into my body. I noticed that my chest was black and blue from my chin hitting it, but it, I didn't understand. I had my wisdom teeth pulled a few days previously and forgot to tell the doctor that I was on pain medication from that. What was amazing was that I had my brother clean up the loose wood around the church the day before. He cleaned all of it except the sheet of plywood that was supported by lumber and rocks about one and one and a half inches off the ground. That plywood was enough of a cushion to break my fall so that I didn't die. I am not the same person that I was before the accident. I know of that person, but our interests and hobbies are totally different. The most remarkable part about my NDE has been the psychic and paranormal gifts afterwards. The most pronounced as being the connection with Jesus and the power of prayer. After returning home, I got a side job working on custom homes. On the same day, a week later, I fell six feet along the foundation. My arm fell out of its socket and off to the hospital I went again. This time, they x-rayed the top of my body and they could see that there, were, there was a lot of damage. The insurance wouldn't pay for it because it was a side job. I told them that I fell off a church roof a week before, but this is probably due to this fall, but it didn't help. On the records, it stated that I'd landed on my feet. I remember sitting on my bed saying my prayers. Dear Lord Jesus, who wants a one-armed carpenter that can't read or write that good? Then an angel came, and told me, came to me and told me that I will be a boss. Angels never lie, and I have worked on 30 projects so far, and each time I say my prayers, they're always answered. I was affected my whole life with being dyslexic. 
I got D's and F's all through grade school. I met my wife in high school and she did all my homework to get me through high school. But the sad thing is that all the people that have the ability to read and write seldom pray to their maker. I wouldn't change my disabilities for anything, for they have opened my eyes to a higher understanding and that my books are open through prayer and God always puts me on the right page. A year later, I was talking to my grandmother about falling and walking around and seeing everything green and holding my head and laying down. My grandmother said, you fell off the roof and you never got up until the paramedics put you in the ambulance. I figured she was just old and couldn't remember. I knew I was walking around, so I called my brother-in-law, who was there also, and he said the same thing. You fell and laid on the ground until the paramedics put you in the ambulance. And I noticed one other thing. It's impossible, impossible for me to hold onto my head with one hand on each side and lay down on the ground. But I know I did it. I guess when God laid me back down in my body, I didn't need my physical arms. P.S. God gave me a great wife, and she is still typing this note for me, overcoming my flaws. And ever since I met her at 15, I thought she was an angel, and I dedicate this page to her for loving me no matter what. Have a great day, because it's a choice. And there's a couple questions. When did question date of your NDE occurrence? 1984 question at the time of your experience uh, was there a life-threatening event answer yes an accident um, and question at what time during your experience were you at your highest level of consciousness and alertness answer I didn't realize that my body was on the ground because I was, I was up and walking around and felt like I was fine the only difference was that everything was tinted green like looking through green, green colored sunglasses there was energy flowing through me. I couldn't see my grandmother. I could hear her, though. Question. Did time seem to speed up or slow down? Answer. Everything seemed to be happening at once, or time stopped or lost all meaning. I saw everything in the blink of an eye. A whole life review. It would take years of Earth time to relay my life frame by frame to another person. The flow of information was conveyed in the flow of light. Question. Did scenes from your past come back to you? Answer. My past flashed before me, out of control. I saw every act in my life, frame by frame, and every good thing and every bad thing. There was no judgment other than how I felt about the incident. For example, I remember during the life review feeling so bad about hitting the frog with a stick when I was a child. The last frame was my wife and children, and then I heard my grandmother praying over me. I started to pray also. In that moment, I learned the power of prayer and put my faith in Jesus. Did you, question, did you come to a border or point of no return? Answer, I came to a barrier that I was not permitted to cross or was sent back against my will. I prayed to God to let me come back, and he did. Question, do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, yes, I can see the future in dreams. I know things by praying and then listening to the answers. I also do many shamanistic things that nobody taught me, but that I have been told are only passed down in families. I have had many experiences through prayer and hands-on healing. I recently helped solve a murder case involving a young child, and I have been privy to a past life vision and healing of the remaining emotional animosity from dying in the Civil War in a previous life and carried into this lifetime. I met the fellow responsible for slaughtering my battalion. In the end, forgiveness was the answer. Question. Are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you? Answer. The best part was knowing I would be there for my kids. The worst part was thinking I would not be there for my kids. Question. At any time during your life, has anything ever reproduced in any part of this the experience? Answer. Yes. Three years after my experience, I went to see a hypnotist to find out if I really was walking around my body. My grandmother and brother told me that I never moved from the time I hit the ground until the time I was in the hospital. 
I could have sworn I moved because I was up and walking around. During the regression, I relived the NDE. I saw myself in the clouds 300 feet away watching myself fall from the church rooftop. Question, is there anything else you would like to add about your experience? Answer, paranormal gifts, healing. There was a lady who would hemorrhage three months into her pregnancy. The first time I gave her a rosary and asked her to pray to Jesus. Although she lost the baby, the bleeding stopped. The second time she started to hemorrhage at three months into her pregnancy and called me. I again came over with a rosary and we prayed. This time the baby lived and the bleeding stopped. The third time the lady hemorrhaged during her third month of pregnancy and she called me again. This time I handed her the rosary and we played, pr prayed. The, the baby lived and the bleeding stopped. My brother, I was driving home and saw this really bad motorcycle accident. I was compelled to stop and pray for the motorcyclist. Later, I found out that the motorcyclist was my brother, who had been so badly mangled that I didn't recognize him. Through the power of prayer, my brother is still with us today. Employee, I had a fellow working for me. His family was from Ireland, and his mother became very ill and was dying. The fellow wanted to be with his mother before she died, but didn't have the money for a regular ticket. He had to purchase an advance ticket in order to be able to afford to go to Ireland. He kept asking me when to buy the ticket. I kept saying I wasn't getting anything. After about six months, he asked me if it was time to buy the ticket. I told him, yes, it is time now. The fellow bought the ticket, got to spend three days with his family, and to be with his mother when she actually passed away. He was so grateful to be there and thanked me profusely when he got back to the States. Reincarnation I had a profound experience where I saw myself as a Union soldier in the Civil War. My shoes were tattered. I could feel the cold coming through the soles of the, in the, toe, the holes in the toes. I was so tired and missing my sword. I was walking along a gully, picking up heads to see if anyone was alive after the attack at Antietam. Later, I was visiting relatives and had an odd feeling that I needed to drive around and find something related to the Civil War. I came upon an American Indian Museum. Although I couldn't understand why I was there, I got out anyway. As I passed a teepee, I got the strangest feeling. I went to the curator and asked about the teepee. He said that a fellow named Larry insisted that it be part of the collection and that it was from the Civil War. I contacted Larry and we had a good talk that evening. I found out that he also had flashbacks of the war, just like I did. We didn't know our connection, but somehow we were tied together. He encouraged me to go to the 135th anniversary reenactment of Gettysburg. When the time came, I went and was trying to find Larry. In the first place that I had checked, nobody knew him. So I prayed to God and was directed to a spot in the middle of a Confederate camp. It turned out that Larry wasn't there, but his brother was. His brother told me that Larry couldn't make it because he was allergic to the wool suit. Close quote. Must have been his first time. Open quote. All through this, I was having a lot of flashbacks. When I got home, I immediately called Larry. I told him that I forgave him as he was the soldier who ordered that my battalion be slaughtered and who took my sword. Larry burst into a mighty emotional release over the phone. This was such a moving moment. It is never too late to forgive in this life or from another. Katie, I was asked to use my psychic gifts to help police find a murderer. I thank my God for letting me raise my kids and all the blessings that he let me experience. The last one was working on a missing girl case in Minnesota. I was working in Ohio at the time, and my brother called me up about a girl missing in Minnesota, and he was telling me her name, and I was able to see the killer and exactly how he did it. My brother told me to call the police up there, and I did. They said if they needed help, they would call me. A few weeks later, my brother called again and asked if I called the cops. I told him that what they said. He said to call a specific number, so I did. I asked them if this was a help number for the girl who had been killed, and they said yes. 
I told the person on the other end of the phone everything I saw in detail, including that he stabbed her seven times, raped her, then cut her up with a chainsaw and burned her in a barbecue pit at his home. That the next day, he took a, hole, a post hole digger and buried the ashes over an area of bog. The lady started crying and said she was Katie's mom. She begged me to help find her girl and said she would pay any amount of money. I told her that I don't charge money, that I believe what comes free must also go free. I asked her to mail me a shirt and a sock belonging to her girl. I drove 900 miles with no map. I ended up two blocks from the killer's home. The energy stopped at a corner gravel road intersection. I called the number and said who I was and where I ended up. The person who answered was Pat, Katie's brother. He said, you're two blocks from the killer's home. I asked him to come to take me, come and take the next two blocks, take me the next two blocks as we got in front of the driveway of the killer. I felt the worst energy in my entire life. I felt like throwing up and the hair was standing up on my arms and my neck. I took photos with my camera all around me. Pat was shocked on how the property affected me. I see the trailer and the yard and the pit where he burned her and said, this is the man that killed his sister. Later that day, I downloaded photos and it shocked me. I caught a demon in the road with horns and a photo of Katie's face with a skull over the left side. I called Pat and asked him to come look at what I had. He was shocked and said, would you please show my mom? The next day, I went to show Pam, the mother. As I went into her house, her, she was crying and said, I hate God for this. At that time, I knew what to say. I said, Pam, God has nothing to do with this murder. I asked her while looking at this photo, does God have horns? This is the work of Satan. Weeks, months later, Bloom was, Blom was convicted of Katie's murder with no body found, but they did find a small piece of jawbone and a tooth in the barbecue pit at the property that put him away for the murder. The sad thing is that I seen the demon that really did the murder and used Blom's body to do its acts. When it could not use Blom anymore, it jumped out and was standing in the driveway for another week so to control. The true problem was never stopped. Cops can't put demons in jail cells. I mean, I made a web page for Katie with the two photos on the bottom in on the bottom in the photo. Look between the tire tracks and see the horn jelly looking thing. The top photo look to the right over the white fence and see the face of Katie with a skull over the left side. Scary, but I am still working for my God. Thankful that he let me raise my kids.